We decided we'd go to Sunbury Pop Festival because we heard that was going to be the greatest cultural event in history. Billy Thorpe and the Aztecs were brilliant. But Billy Thorpe began to scream out to the audience and got the audience punching the air and screaming the obscenity back. Anger against war and the whole of that generation. Suddenly, they gently ease into somewhere over the rainbow longing for a different world, for something that would answer an existential hole into which that generation had fallen. Well, what better context to go to to start a conversation about Jesus? We had this guy who'd been a biker and a really wild guy, and he wanted to be baptised, surrounded on the banks of the mud hole by naked men and women <laughs> And he gets up out of the water like he's John the Baptist, filled with the Holy Spirit, holds a Bible in the air and tells of his testimony how Jesus has changed him to all the crowd who were jeering when it starts off and who are applauding when he finishes. <laughs> Just astonishing. The sense of the transcend and the sense of the divine was sown early in my life. However, teenage years, I began to read existential books because for a brief period, secretly became an atheist. And it came to its peak as I'd begun a university course at the Queensland University of Technology. And on one night, it was like the stars, you could reach up and grab a handful. And I looked up and felt the infinite sense of the universe and just said out loud, there is no God. When I die, I'll die like a dog. I'll rot in the ground and the worms will eat me. I was setting up a, a student's camp. We invited a pretty aggressive preacher to come. I was going to play through the farce and then disappear but it was my Waterloo because he said, you know, most people that have lost their faith in God or meaning in life, it really isn't an intellectual question at all. It's usually a moral and ethical question. And I thought my struggle with God is not really a struggle with God. It's with making sense of my own life. You know, that devastated me. I sat up all the night. I sort of revised the whole of my life and what was crook about it, got rid of that, and woke up the next day just like the sun was shining. My solid sense that God is there and there is meaning to all of our lives has never weakened from that day to this. And so I end up coming as a teacher who's a pastor amongst a staff that are mostly atheists. The kids are now listening to rock and roll music that's getting more and more explicit about sexuality and all sorts of stuff. I suddenly realise that I am just totally ill-equipped to help these kids. That was to start a total overthrow of my worldview. The Gospels and the Prophets, I just read them over and over again. I'd seen a gospel that really was beginning to address every cry of the human heart, not just the desire to make sure you didn't go to the bad place and got yourself a ticket for the good place. It became a journey to walk with God and work with humanity. When Crosby, Stills, Nash and Young in 1968 tried to get students and everybody to go to Chicago for the Democratic Convention, they sang a song, won't you come with us to Chicago? We can change the world, rearrange the world. And you know, I felt that. I really believed that. My hippie mates believed that, but they believed the lining up of the stars and the age of Aquarius had come and we were gonna dance with flowers in our hair and do all sorts of things to bring it about. Us Jesus freaks believed the love of Jesus could bring that about. I believe we were right. But unfortunately, the world didn't go on to make that happen. 
The deterioration had begun to set in, as it did at Altamont, where it all blew up and the guy at the front got stabbed and Mick Jagger, comparing the show, said, you know, the dream is over. But about 68, 69 were the beginning of the Jesus movement. So it took us into a new hope through the 70s. People that had been to Kathmandu, they tried every religion in the world, and they, you know, got spaced out on acid and gone to Alpha Centauri and come back. And they're all saying, I've now got my act together because I've met Jesus. One of these guys was an existentialist, but he went days into the wilderness with no tracks or anything with his compass and a little sack on his back with some water and stuff. And he stood on the edge of this plateau and he said, God, I don't think you're there. And if all we are is just a total accident, I don't want to live anymore. Can't see any sense in it. But if you're there, you'd better do something right now because I'm going to jump. And just as he said that, a long-haired freak came up the other side of the plateau and said, excuse me, sir, but are you the person Jesus sent me to talk to? There's only two possibilities for the salvation of the human race. One of them is God, if he's there, to change our natures, to bring us into love and hope and faith and care for one another. Or the other is nature itself. But somehow we will evolve the right way. Christianity is always calling the world to transformation. It's always critiquing things that everyone accepts for granted, if it's real Christianity, if it hasn't just conformed to this world and lost its prophetic and cutting edge. I've always believed you give me a Bible in one hand and a newspaper in the other, that's all I need to interact. There are several messages of Jesus that are 2,000 years old, but are absolutely to the minute relevant. I mean, the Sermon on the Mount Blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed are those that hunger and thirst after rightness and goodness. I mean, what could be more relevant than that? Jesus said, you cannot live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Beware of covetousness, which is idolatry. It's worshiping the wrong God. I mean, it was the society where we had so much to spend that produced a tenfold increase in clinical depression. So if I'm going to address depression, which is absolutely pandemic in the Western world, then I've got to address the question, why are people clinically depressed? And our whole society is all about greed. I mean, I, I can't think of anything more relevant than a conversation between the Bible and the daily newspaper. <laughs> When I look at the New Testament, what it says about Jesus is very simple. He spoke truth to power. He advocated for the poor. He healed the sick. He made friends of the marginalized and he preached the good news. It's exactly what we did. But we would go to the local schools. We would meet with whatever youth groups were available to meet to. We'd go and sit in the pub. Any town we went to, by the time we left there, we'd made friends with all the people in the pubs. Many of them would make the kind of comment, you know, Jesus has, has come to our pub, which is the way they felt. We followed the pattern with God's squad. Go where they are, stay where they are, listen to them, converse with them, love them, and go there believing that they're not in total darkness, for God is not very far from any one of us and look for ways in their lives where they can see glimpses of the kingdom of God even though they don't know the name. The transcendent longing within the human spirit that is expressed in art and poetry down through the centuries in every culture is a hidden indicator of a reality that we're not just physical creatures, that there's something else to us. And that's how our motorcycle mission thing started because we really were saying not just come to Jesus and get saved. We were saying, the world doesn't have to be the way it is. And if we would take Jesus seriously, it could be different. And ever since then, nothing really matters anymore. 
accept the love of Christ in doing something about changing the world. You know, there's a beautiful old blues song that says, when he calls me, I will answer. And I know I've let him down at times, I let myself down, let my family down at times. When we get to the other side, the best we'll be able to say is I was an unprofitable servant. But I can say that my life is driven by my desire to love him with all my heart, all my soul, all my strength and all my mind. If God is a father and loves us all, then it ill behoves us to do other than respond to our parents' example and to love one another with all our hearts the same way that we love him.